Hey, what's up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros, and today we're going to be showing you how to build a cheap Minecraft server. This is a second version of a video we did last year, and this one is going to be a lot better. But before we dive into it, let's hear a word from today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and also help you run your business. So just stay tuned to the end of this video to see how Squarespace could help you. So let's go ahead and talk about these parts and how it makes up this beautiful Minecraft server. So the total price for this computer was about $350 minus a little bit because we decided to actually go with third gen Ryzen on this, which we'll talk about the parts in just a minute. But the main reason we did that was because we wanted this to be something that someone could just order all the parts for right now and it is 100% ready to go to make your Minecraft server and honestly be able to play Minecraft while hosting the server. So this computer could actually play games as well and has a really good upgrade path. And this also is gonna be a full tutorial video. What we're gonna do is put this system together. If you do want a full PC build, guide, hit the I in the top right corner. That is our full PC build guide. Pretty self-explanatory if you follow through that. The only thing you're not going to be doing with this is adding a graphics card. And then we're going to be going through installing MineOS, which is a Linux distro, that, which basically has all the Minecraft server properties baked into one install. So we'll be doing that at the end of this video. But if you're ready to build a Minecraft server, let's talk about each part and exactly how it makes up this Minecraft server. So for the processor, we decided to go with the Ryzen 3200G. This is third gen Ryzen. The reason we went for it is because the cores really don't matter a ton. You don't need like a ton of cores or anything these days for a Minecraft server. So we wanted something that had good integrated graphics that could actually, well, play a little bit of Minecraft along with run the server well. 3200G is probably one of the best bang for bucks right now in that category. And another thing that we decided needed to be pretty good was going with good RAM. So we got DDR4-2666, 16 gigs. That's important to have a large capacity for really anything that's server-based. You've probably heard that RAM is like one of the most important parts. You need a lot of it because servers, well, they like to use up a lot of memory. So we went with 16 gigs for this. For the motherboard, we went with the Gigabyte A320M. This is really the cheapest AM4 motherboard that you can get. That's why we went with it. There's really nothing good about it. It's an A320. It does handle up to Ryzen 5, which is, you know, good enough. If you ever did want to upgrade, it could go 1600 AF for around the same price as this. Actually, a little bit cheaper if you can still get your hands on ones. So, we do recommend going with an A320 if you're just on a really tight budget, which we were. But if you can get a B450, go with that just because it's, it's overall a better board. And now for storage, we just went with this ADATA M.2 SSD. It's not even NVMe, it's just a standard 256 gigabyte SSD. This system could be used to run multiple game servers if you're wanting to host different kinds of games that actually allow you to run a dedicated server. Um, so having more storage might be more important to you if you plan on running multiple servers, but this is more than enough for MineOS, which is the main thing we're using this for, and uh, it's gonna be fast. Now these two products right here are the kind of cheap products that we went with to make this really cost effective. First up, the power supply. We went with this Apivia Astro 450 watt power supply. Now it's Apivia. It's not a brand you normally go with if you're getting a power supply, but the reviews are pretty solid. It is really cheap at $22. And um, I'd rather spend $22 right now on a power supply than overpay and you know have it well, you know, just not get good value. But uh, if you do want to offer something that is a little bit more mainstream, you could with Thermaltake, but the prices are pretty expensive right now with just situations going on in the world. Um, but just keep that in mind when building this. There are a lot of power supply options you can go with. We decided to opt for the Astro Power. So before you comment down below, this is a crap power supply. We're going to find out. And now for the case. It's a server, it doesn't need to be pretty, but you know here at the Toasted Rose, we like to make things look pretty. And we have the Raidbax Neon, which is basically a RGB case with just like a acrylic side panel, nothing special, but it does come with RGB fans three to be exact. And it comes with a power supply basement so we can cable manage this thing to look really nice. If you were gonna double this as a gaming PC on the side and have it like dual boot with Windows and MineOS, which you could do, um, this would be a good option because it could actually be used as a gaming PC or spare computer that you can actually use and it won't look like a total piece of crap. Uh, but this is a really awesome case to add some RGB and around 40 bucks really can't go wrong. So how about we quickly put this thing together because it's an APU system, doesn't take too long. And then we'll be diving into the tutorial part of this video. Let's do it.
Alright guys, so now that we have this PC all put together, let's go to the tutorial section of this guide. Now we're going to be installing what is known as MinOS, more specifically MinOS Turnkey, which is basically a bootable Linux distro that allows you to make a remote accessible Minecraft server. So what we can do is set this thing up in the other room over there. Here's Jackson, by the way. Uh, we can set this thing up in the other room, and when we do set it up, we can remotely access it from another computer without having any issues, and it can just kind of stay in a closet or wherever you want to put it. Um, so, you know, I got the distraction going on behind me. But anyways, uh, here is MinOS. Uh, this is the website for MinOS. All you have to do to install MinOS is a couple of things. One, you need a USB flash drive, super simple. Um, then you need to download MinOS from right here. It is an ISO file. So all you're going to need to do um, is download this, get a flash drive that can support 450 megabytes, and then download a bootable USB tool. I just use Rufus. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, download Rufus, and then what you'll need to do is open up Rufus, throw the ISO on there, which we'll go ahead and do again real quick just so we have an extra demo. And then right now, as you can tell, you would find your device, which would be your flash drive. You'll pick which ISO file you want, which you hit select, which right here is our ISO file, mine OS. And then you just hit start. Make sure you know that you will be erasing this flash drive. So if you do do this, you are going to lose any files on the flash drive. And then once you run that, you should have a bootable drive that allow you to throw it in the computer that you just built, go into your boot order settings and boot to that drive. And then it's pretty much self-explanatory. You set a password for you to be able to access the online uh, interface, which we'll show you after we get everything set up. But we're going to go ahead and move over to the computer and walk you through the installation process just to make sure you don't get lost along the way. And to be fair, this is my first time doing this. So we're going to go ahead and do it. All right, guys, now that we have this PC all put together and the bootable USB ready to go, we're going to go ahead and boot to it. Now, if you do have Windows installed or anything installed already on the computer that you're going to be using this on, keep in mind, you're going to have to change the boot order to make sure it actually boots to the USB. But because we don't have anything installed, well, where we actually forced it to boot to the USB. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and do this. Now you can do it one of two ways. You can try it live on the USB stick first. If you do have Windows installed on your computer, you just wanna see how this works, you can most definitely just install without it. Um, or you can install directly to the hard disk, which is what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna click on install the hard disk. Um, and pretty much the install is self-explanatory. And as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, after we do this, we'll be able to remote in directly to this computer and manage all our Minecraft server stuff. So what we'll do is go ahead and use the uh, guided entire disk. We're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, or you can just do guided, use the largest continuous free space where you don't make up, where you don't take up any of the other space on the drive. But we're gonna go ahead and use the entire thing because why not? Um, let's see, do, 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 that's fine, yes. Okay, cool. Okay, continue, yes. So our drive wasn't totally wiped, so it's asking us to do a bunch of partitioning to the drive to make sure it's good for uh, this Linux distro. So we're just gonna go ahead and let it do that so we can uh, get rid of everything that's on there. We're gonna copy the data to the disk. And then from here, we're just gonna basically make the root password and the other password we need to access our Minecraft server. Um, and everything should be pretty easy from the web interface. So we'll dive into that after everything installs here, but pretty simple. We will leave a link to the forum down below for MinOS. Um, it will give you more step-by-step -step instructions if you do want to uh, check that out. It seems that this new installation is only on the operating system of the computer. If so, it'd be safe to install the Grub bootloader. Yes, we'll do that. So we'll install a bootloader to make sure we can actually boot to the thing when it's installed. Um, and then when that's done, we should continue through the installation process. If you start the computer in order to use the new installation, would you like to restart now? Yes. And then we might need to go back into the BIOS and turn on the SSD because I think the installation will probably finish from the SSD. Save and exit and we'll see if this actually will post properly. That is, fingers crossed. Okay, we're moving. I see a lot of numbers on the screen. It's kind of scary. Cool. Okay, please enter a new password for the root account. Uh, must be eight characters long. We'll just go ahead and type in a password for that. A password for the Minecraft account must be at least eight characters long. We'll do... Uh, okay, so turnkey backup migration saves files that changes the database. Uh, it can be automatically restored from here. Turnkey, you can start using service immediately if you initialize now or you can manually later. Um, we'll just go ahead and hit apply. Uh, enable local system notifications to be forwarded to your regular inbox and notifications include security updates and system messages. Um, I'm not gonna do that for right now. We'll, we'll just, actually, can I skip it? Yeah, we'll just skip that. We don't really need a manual update sent to our email. Um, by default, the system is configured automatically install security updates. Uh, we'll do yes, that's fine. 
make sure we have all the security updates we need. Because this is based on Linux, in theory, the concept of going the extra route to do this as opposed to installing Windows and having uh, just the uh, server launcher running on Windows is you'd have much better stability. Um, and now it says, welcome to mine OS. This will be all blurred out. Um, but basically everything else should be good to go. Please note out of the box, only these ports are open um, and service run manually this way. And then we'll go into the advanced menu and pretty much everything is golden here. You should have everything ready to go. All you have to do is then go into your, uh, let's see, no, I don't wanna quit. Awesome, now we're gonna go ahead and see and make sure everything's up and running properly. And we should be able to remote into this. All right, guys, now we are back to the computer that we started this whole thing on. We have the computer running in the other room, and all you're gonna do is go to the IP address displayed on the screen once you finish the install, and then you will get the signed-in screen right here. The username is MC, and the password is whatever the password is that you set in the other room. So be sure you remember that password, and then once you sign in, you'll be greeted with, you will be greeted with this, this, is your Minecraft server dashboard through mine OS. So all you have to do from here is go to create a server. You can basically decide whatever you wanna call the server. You can call it toasty server, whatever server you wanna call it. Um, and then go through everything. You can leave the default settings. You can set the difficulty, the game mode, all sort of fun stuff. Then what you can do is hit create server. Now I've already created a server. It's called toasty server. And we're gonna go into the actual server settings. So I'm gonna server status. Here's our server right now. It is currently down. So what you need to do is decide exactly what you're gonna run on your server. So to do that, you go under profiles and under profiles, you can do a uh, numerous amounts of things. You can do a forge server, you can do a spigot server, you can do a lot of different types of servers and you can find different ways to import different ones if you're interested, like feed the beast. And what you can do is go through and download whatever version you want, which I downloaded the latest version 115.2. And then what we're gonna do is go back to server status, pick that profile right here, which we need the server needs to know what profile to run on. Click that. We're going to broadcast it to the LAN that you can broadcast it to a network also in the future if you want people to join from outside your room, which is most likely what you wanna do. Uh, but we're gonna do this on the LAN just for demonstration purposes. And then you're gonna hit start. And then you have to actually hit the jar file, which I forgot to do and hit start. And then from here, it says I need to accept the EULA, which is required by the Minecraft uh, developers. So accept the EULA and then hit start. And then from here, your server should be online. So you can go to the dashboard real quick and you can see that the server is up. You can see how much RAM you're actually using on the server. And then you can just connect to the server in theory. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and pull up Minecraft, which should be installed on this computer. All right, so now that we have Minecraft open, we're gonna go under multiplayer, proceed. Um, we should be able to add a server. So as you can see right here, our LAN server is actually up and running. So we can go ahead and click on this. And then, in theory, this server should be working. Encrypting, joining world, and boom, look at that. We're on a Minecraft server. So we are running this through LAN. You can configure it through opening your ports if you want to, to actually open it up to people to join on the outside world. But you have to give out your IP address, so keep that in mind. If you do give out your IP address, only give it to people that you trust. Um, but hey, it's working. Can't seem to have any issues there. Let me get Jackson real quick to come in and load it up on. All right, guys, we are now testing out the Minecraft server. Got Matt right over here. Hello. Load up the LAN, see what happens. Oh, look at that. Smooth. All right, well, land up here. Where are you at? Where are you at, Kiz? Ah, I found you. Why'd you spawn so far away? But yeah, so we got uh, we got full bars and everything. I mean, obviously, we're we are playing land, so of course that would work. But basically, we have all the essentials set up of a Minecraft server. The only thing um, is if you're wanting it to actually be uh, over a network rather than having to be... Um, you know in your house you are gonna have to do port forwarding and whatnot Which I don't believe we're gonna go into this video because that's a whole process and a lot of private information But if you want to see ways to port forwards check in the description down below and we can uh, show you guys how to do it now let's do the outro. Outro. So of course as you guys might be wondering how could you double this as a gaming PC to actually be able to play Minecraft well 
kind of be a little bit hard to do that if you're running the Linux version on here because you're literally booting into Linux and you don't have Windows, but you could put Linux as a VM and then have Windows alongside that. The only downside is it would still be kind of hard to get into one or the other. So another option that you do have is just running the standard Minecraft server in Windows 10, and then you can play it as well. And honestly, the standard one works almost just as well. Now, if you have any problems installing MinOS, there'll be links in the description down below to some of the guides I used to make sure everything was up and running. Again, I kind of did this learning as I went, so some of the stuff may be a little bit uh, back and forth. So I would highly suggest if you want a step-by-step -step guide, link in the description down below, come back to this if you get stuck anywhere. Um, and I really do like the install. MinOS is really cool. It's super easy to set up. If you are really, really passionate about Minecraft and want to have a Minecraft server, this thing would be great to just put together and really not touch ever and have it in a closet or wherever you want to put it um, and then you can access it whenever you want via the web os so uh, pretty self-explanatory to put together and very excited with how it turned out you know what else i'm excited about our sponsor squarespace, squarespace. let's learn more about that shall we if you have ever considered making a website but feel like you don't have enough time to do it, well, today's video sponsor Squarespace is the perfect option for you. You know by now that Squarespace is the best and most effective way to build a website for your business or personal use. We have used Squarespace long before they partnered up with us and I've recommended their services to numerous people. No matter your skill level, creating a website on Squarespace is simple. I'm not just talking about building the website, I'm talking about SEO and other back in requirements that come along with making an effective website, Squarespace makes it super simple. I took some time to work on our own website on Squarespace and I absolutely love how fast I was able to put something together using their beautiful built-in templates and how it made our brand look even more modern. Head on over to squarespace.com slash to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain by using code toastybros at checkout. Guys, now is the perfect time to head on over to squarespace.com slash toastybros and create your dream website today. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's wrap this video up, shall we? So if you guys want to make this really awesome Minecraft server, make sure you use our links in the description down below. They are affiliate links, so they do help us out. And also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Goodbye. Peace. Peace. <laughs> RGB.